What even is a lightweight electric mountain bike? Although it may sound like an oxymoron, the latest category of eMTBs are now lighter than ever, proving that powerful pedaling assistance and low weight are not mutually exclusive. I'll be taking a look at what a lightweight eMTB really is, who should be riding one, and with thanks to my special guest, later on we'll be finding out if they really do feel more like non-assisted bikes than ever before. We want to thank Specialized for sponsoring this video and giving us their lightweight e-mountain bike, the Turbo Kinevo SL2, to ride. We published a video back in 2020 on the brand's first bike in this category, the Turbo Levo SL. While technology has undoubtedly moved on, and we'll talk more about this, the lightweight electric mountain bike spirit remains at the heart of the new bike. Now then, where's my special guest? Our special guest is free rider Joel Anderson. You can tell Joel's a free rider because of his awesome mullet, rad riding skills, and the fact that he always appears in epic slow motion. Joel rides everything from local laps of trail centres to taking on some of the biggest jumps in the world. During the Fest series, he's cleared gaps of nearly 100 feet. As a brand ambassador for Specialised UK, Joel's got access to all of Specialised range, including a lightweight EMTB, a full power EMTB and a delicious selection of non-assisted bikes. So Joel is in a unique position to discuss where best to deploy different kinds of bikes and, of course, the advantages of a lightweight EMTB. Joel is riding his specialised Turbo Levo SL2 with 150mm of suspension travel and a mullet setup, just like Joel himself. Whereas I'll start the day on the non-assisted specialised Enduro, followed by specialised full power Turbo Levo e-bike and finally matching up with Joel, jumping aboard another lightweight specialised EMTB, the Turbo Kinevo SL2. But before we ride, here's a little more that you need to know about lightweight e-mountain bikes. As the name suggests, the key difference between a regular EMTB and a lightweight one is, you guessed it, the weight. While regular e-mountain bikes often weigh around 24 kilos, the best lightweight EMTBs can be in the sub 20 kilo club, saving a substantial amount of weight compared to their full power siblings. It's therefore no surprise to see the new Kinevo SL2 tip the scales at just over 19 kilos. That's only around four kilos heavier than the non-assisted Enduro, but it is an impressively modest weight considering the way that this bike can propel you up the climbs. When compared to its full power stablemate, the Turbo Levo, it's a weight saving of three kilos. Let's look at where those grams are shaved from and how the savings affect the performance of lightweight e-mountain bikes. Key differences are to be found in the bike's drive unit, so let's start there. Batteries are heavy, so by reducing the size and capacity of an e-bike's battery, manufacturers can drastically reduce not only the weight, but also streamline the overall bulk of the frame. Compared to the battery capacity of most full power e-bikes, like the Turbo Levo, sporting batteries with 700 watt hour capacity, lightweight e-bikes tend to offer options around half of that. The Kinevo SL2, for example, runs a 320 watt hour battery. However, smaller and lighter batteries can still maintain battery range depending on which motor it's paired with. Talking of which, to further reduce weight, lightweight e-mountain bikes also need specific motors. Compared to regular e-bikes, the motors found on lightweight EMTBs are noticeably smaller and quieter than full power e-bikes and provide a seamless pedaling experience. Lightweight EMTBs deliver their power progressively, giving you a helping hand while allowing you to conquer the climbs. To achieve both the weight savings and the natural ride feel, lightweight EMTB motors are packed with technology. Lightweight e-mountain bike motors are smaller than those found on full power EMTBs. For example, Specialized latest lightweight Turbo SL2 motor delivers 50 Nm of torque, compared to the Turbo full power system, which dishes out a whopping 90 Nm. A feature of these smaller motors, which are calibrated for a lower output, is that the power delivery is gentler than full power EMTBs. This can be an added bonus for some riders, including those who are new to e-bikes or riders who like their e-power to be unobtrusive to the ride experience. Now let's move on to the build components. On full power electric mountain bikes, the brakes, drivetrain and suspension must be especially heavy duty, often more comparable to downhill mountain bike components, or even tougher. Why is that? 
Well, for e-mountain bike riding, these parts have to be especially bulletproof to withstand the high torque of the motors, the extra weight of the bike, and the huge mileage which can easily be covered with the help of a powerful motor and large capacity battery. We love to see brands specking e-bikes with heavy duty downhill brakes and tougher tire casings, which, although slightly heavier, will make a difference when it comes to the durability and performance on the trail. However, on lightweight EMTBs, manufacturers can spec lighter components, sometimes even ones which are not e-bike specific, in order to keep the weight down and provide a riding experience which is more akin to a lightweight non-assisted enduro or even trail bike. A key visual difference that distinguishes lightweight EMTBs from their full power cousins is the use of unobtrusive displays and controls. Manufacturers make efforts to bring the electrical accoutrements in line with the organic ride feel, quiet motor and sleek frame, doing away with large screens and control surfaces. Some brands even do away with the display completely, using just a small LED panel to show you which power modes you're in and how much battery power you have left. This removes distraction and allows the rider to focus on the trail ahead. So I'm on the normally aspirated specialised enduro now, which is lovely and light, but I am missing any assistance on the uphill. Are you working hard there, Joe? No, I'm just kind of spinning. I'm in trail, so kind of mid-range of this. I could bump it up and then I could just disappear and see at the ah. top. Wait for me. Ah. I'm on the Levo Turbo and I'm about to Levo Turbo right up this climb. <laughs> I'll see you at the top then, I guess. Right, so I'm on the Turbo Levo and you're on the SL. How the tables have turned. On the way up, this thing has all of the power you could ever want. Feel that power! Oh, oh yes! Oh, baby! Oh. Ride up the impossible with a Levo. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, you can't keep up on one of these basically, but I'm not that far behind. You're not far behind, but then when I'm on the descent, I can really feel there's a bit more weight behind this. Yeah, one. yeah, which sometimes helps depending on the track. But if you're riding tables like we are, the scrubs on this are insane. I think that might be more the rider than the bike. <laughs> Let's do some more. Yeah. So here we are both on the lightweight e-bikes. How are you feeling, Joel? Just, this is like the dream. When you're in bed, imagining going for a ride, just cruising around up steep hills and then doing loads of tracks, go home feeling tired, but not sick. Just minimal effort, steep climbs, and you're cruising around on a fairly lightweight bike. Yeah, then go to the pub. So we're halfway down the hill and I'm pretty convinced that these lightweight e-bikes could be the one. Yeah, very, very good. I choose to take my SL out when I go to say Windir or come here to Forest of Dean with a jumpy track that I want to do my scrubs and my whips on and I can still pedal back up and do a lot more <laughs> runs and ultimately get a lot more bike time than I would on an old bike. Let's go get some more. Right on. So that was an awesome day riding. I really enjoyed my time on all three bikes, but I think it's about time to sum up now, don't you, Joel? Please. As you'd expect, the middle bike, the SL, seems to be the perfect mix of all three. What do you reckon? Such a perfect UK bike. You can just go out, feel like a hero, pedaling up all the hills. You can still do your scrubs and your whips, and you don't even run out of battery during the day. It's like amazing. The Turbo Levo was amazing on the climbs. I loved all of that extra power. Just put it in turbo and wheelie your way to the top. But when descending, you did notice the extra bulk. The non-assisted specialised enduro was really fun on the descents and I really enjoyed flicking it around. But for me, the small weight penalty of the lightweight e-bike was well worth it when the terrain started to turn uphill. So Joel, you're lucky enough to have all three types of bike in your stable. Which scenario would you use for which bike? Well, I do actually ride them all quite equally. If I was going to go out with all my friends, I usually go out on the big power Levo, 
and we just munch through the miles, just go until everyone's got a dead battery and go home. And then I usually, I actually ride this one maybe the most, only just, for solo rides or if I'm going out riding with people on non-assisted bikes, I can just ride with them. It's not really trying that hard and I can have a great day. And the non-assisted bikes, I just, I use when it's way more extreme and I need something burly and light. So now you know all about lightweight e-mountain bikes and how they compare to both full power e-bikes and non-assisted mountain bikes. Thanks very much to Joel for joining us. Thank you for having me, it's been great. If you're left with any questions, pop them in the comments below and we'll answer them. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe for more of the latest news and guides to mountain bike technology. <laughs> there you go, straight to the blue.